Okay, um, shout out me if I start to go over time because I'm now totally lost by what time I should finish at. Um, okay, thanks folks. Um, nice to hear, nice to speak to you all. My name is David Heaney and today I'm representing NHS Highland as the, um, as one of the, um, Scottish partners in making it work. Next slide. Uh, yeah, and we had a forum today, but we're, this is the last thing that we're doing today because we've had our forum. We had presentations um, from the Making It Work team, but I also just want to let you see the other present pr presenters today just so that you know that uh, Making It Work fits into a jigsaw of um, lots of other initiatives that are going on in Scotland. So we had a um, presentation from the Remote and Rural Healthcare Alliance, the Scottish Rural Medical Medicine Collaborative, um, NHS Orkney, the Scottish Government, um, NHS S Shetland and the Scottish Rural Health Partnership. Um, so what we were trying to do today was to slot um, where Making It Work fits into all of this and we're hoping that all these other partners will continue to deliver on recruitment and retention after this project's finished. Next slide, please. Um, for us, this was an experiment. We decided to do the, the, the forum entirely online. There was no one in the room except some of the speakers, but we also had speakers, as you've probably seen, from Orkney and Shetland there. Um, so there was no centre to this, this forum, um, which m means in my head that every, everyone on the periphery has equal status to those in the centre. We were really pleased. We had 100 delegates from a range of disciplines and places. Um, and um, I think many of those would not have been able to attend had we made a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting. So I'm hoping that some of them are listening now um, and uh, hearing me mentioning them. So we feel we widened our audience we save time and travel for our participants. Also, um, it has all been recorded, so you will be able to go and watch any of the presentations that we've done. We'll get you links to those so that you have the possibility of doing that if any of you are specifically interested in any of the things that we present. Um, and I'd also add, before I go into this, that all the materials that we have produced and making it work are available for use or adaptation um, across um, all the countries and uh, that are part of um, Next slide. So on to our Scottish activities. Um, um, our con we began by looking at our conditions for success in the model um, in the framework and we conducted a number of interviews with human resources and others to look at the recruitment processes. Um, we then um, examined community engagement and spoke with communities and um, developed local information and support for new recruits and their families. We also um, uh, um, worked on professional information sharing. You'll hear a little bit about that in, in a while in my talk as well. And finally, we considered um, developments in professional development and team cohesion. I'm going to talk to you about all of those things um, in the remaining time. Next slide, please. Um, we began with interviews with, as I said, human resources, but also um, staff and, and members of the public, uh, particularly we, uh, in, in Orkney. Um, um, we, what we find from those interviews is that people want robust advertising, they want authentic professional and community information, they would like to have a, a welcoming community for what can be a life-changing experience for those moving to and beginning to live in um, a remote and rural community, and they want um, more about contractual information, good contractual information uh, which I'll show you on the next slide, um, where I really just emphasise that the, the, the people that we interviewed said getting the recruitment process right actually helps to retain staff. 
a, a, a good point, I thought, and not that any of you will uh, not know this, but um, remote and rural posts are often not standard. Um, they, the demands in the post folder are not captured in standard normal job descriptions that would be used in urban areas. So more flexibility was desired from those that we interviewed, more clarity in job descriptions, more transparency regarding re relocation and use of, use of transport. Um, um, our, our interviewees also stressed that we should be using technology to update their knowledge and identified that there was a need for support and um, being part of a team which is crucial to lone workers. Um, often people um, uh, work on their own in remote and rural environments. So a buddy, buddying system was suggested for newly appointed staff and we, we have done some work in that. Um, next slide. And this really gets me on to the first of our main products that we'd like you to look at. Um, and that's a professional brochure. This was developed along with a rural support team in West Highland, which is an interdisciplinary team um, that developed um, to, um, which was developed specifically using one of our other parameters, which was aligning service to delivery with, um, uh, with population need um, and an attempt to counter vacancies in general practice. But the staff that were working in the rural support team decided it would be good to provide information to new, um, new um, um, uh, people applying to be um, in their team. So they produced a brochure, but it's an online brochure that includes blogs and short videos of, um, of, from the staff themselves. About, and, and these blogs and, and videos depict and what it's like to live and work in West Highland, what sort of person the, t the, the team needs, who they'd be working with, where they'd be working, what their work's like. Um, all of this explained by team members who um, give their stories and experiences and a real kind of welcome to any, any new recruit, as it were, or any new uh, um, applicant, really. Um, we also, it also documented what professional development training is available. Next slide, please. And this is an example of, um, um, of the very start of one of these brochures. And this is an actual post in, um, in, in the Isle of Sky. So if any of you fancy applying, just take the details there. I'm sure they would welcome, uh, I'm sure they'd welcome an inquiry from uh, whatever in our uh, partnership. Next slide, please. Then the second main um, a product from Scotland was around the community engagement element of the framework. We conducted a literature review of community engagement in regards to recruitment and retention in remote and rural areas. Um, the main findings of that were that local knowledge can help recruitment planning, that community ownership can improve the conditions for newly appointed staff, um, that communities can really offer um, a local appeal um, uh, and describe their community very well and uh, much better than others can so that um, uh, uh, that can help in the recruitment process. And we find communities can be involved in all stages of recruitment, but the important thing was the calibre of that partnership. And we have an example of where this worked really well, which is in West Cree and Orkney, where over the last eight years they've had a 100% recruitment success and doctors and other staff. Um, and this has been achieved by an in-depth understanding of recruitment and retention, but also a strong sense of ownership and a healthy working relationship between the primary care team and the community with mutual investment going on both sides. Um, we, we learned from that and co-produced a community brochure in Ullapool. Next slide. Um, this shows the brochure. Um, um, and again, this was written by the local community. It describes what it's like to live and work in, in the village and is being used by the village for all sorts of appointments now, not just health ones. Uh, it's an honest account of uh, what it's like to live um, in the place that people might be applying to. So uh, that's actually a very useful um, template from which others could learn from. 
and use if they were interested. It's available. Um, next slide. Galloping through this, we um, we 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 also considered professional development, um, um, sharing resources between um, basically what we have here is medics and non-medics in terms of joint training, um, and we also piloted an e-book which gave information to evidence-based, uh, 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 which gave it evidence on, uh, and it was offline so that when staff were not able to get a digital connection as today, um, they could still access that information. So that's again available. Next slide. Uh, David, it's Roger Strasser here. This is your two minute call. You have two minutes. Thank you. That's useful because I, I wasn't quite sure. All right, okay. Um, we also worked in Team Cohesion. Um, the rural support team itself reported they had a real sense of empowerment in writing this brochure. They made, made them think about the work that they're doing. Um, we then helped to instigate a buddy framework for remote practitioners to support them. Um, learned that from our, um, our, our interviews. And finally, there's, a, there's an education platform being set up for staff in um, small islands, or a few, which are islands of the, the west coast of Scotland. Next slide. Um, yeah, and we thought about future professional development, and we are in very early processes of developing a, a rural career pathway for advanced practitioners. And we'd like to explore the possibility of international working about uh, how we might train remote and rural staff and so we've called it in a passport here. Finally, um, next slide. Um, yes, I just want to highlight some of the other work. The Scottish Rural Medicine Collaborative here. If, you, uh, if you're familiar with our project, you'll see there's lots of overlap. Um, um, these are things that they've done with GPs in the last um, two years. We've worked with other staff. Next slide. Um, this is really just an information slide so that any of you who are interested can go and look up these links. This is some of the really good work that's going on in Scotland. I'm not going into the detail of it, but go look. There's good stuff there that can be used elsewhere. Um, next slide. Yes, um, to finish on sustainability, um, as you can see, there's lots of work going on in Scotland. It's over to our partners now to take up the mantle as making it work comes to an end. But what we're sitting thinking about now is how can we find a way to continue to work transnationally? And I hope maybe there'll be some answers to that this afternoon. So thank you very much. And that concludes the presentation from Scotland. Thank you very much, uh, David. <laughs>
and some are going south to Sundsvall and west to Östersund. But there are still only hospitals involved. Next slide. Uh, during the first Recruit to Retain project, we invited Professor Roger Strasser to talk to uh, Umeå University and stakeholders within the region about the advantages with clinical and medical education in primary care, especially in rural and remote areas. And we worked uh, parallel to that with a visionary document uh, that we uh, wrote for the next five years and we could incorporate this work uh, that Dr. Strassler had done in this document. Next, please. And there are also a discussion now in Sweden to, uh, to extend the medical school program from five, to five and a half to six years. And there are discussions now, especially in Umeå, if it, we can increase the clinical training in primary health care. Next slide. So what is now coming and have started already is a rural stream or a rural track. And uh, we have now two students every semester, starting from term six, that are coming to Sturuman to do uh, their, their curriculum and to the small rural hospital in Luxele. This means that they will have a, a almost tenfold increase in rural medicine exposure. They will have the same learning outcomes and assessments tasks. Uh, but we are, we are doing this over a period of four years. Next, please. So this is how it looked like. They will do family medicine, of course, within primary care, but they will also do internal medicine, surgery, psychiatry, family medicine, of course, genome obstetrics, and so on. And for me, as from a Swedish point of view, I think this is probably, this system is probably one of the most valuable achievements we have had in Sweden in this project. And I hope and I think it will increase the amount of rural GPs in the future. To change a university isn't easy, but we have done it with help from our friends, which is really, really great. So, Nicholas, introduce next speaker. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for the next slide. Um, I could say that um, the focus in the, in, the, in, the, in the framework is here training future professionals. And creating this rural stream, as Peter told you about, is one part of our business case study that we have done here in, in, in Sweden. Another case study that is carried out by Storum and municipality is going to be presented right now. And that is related to a relocation coordination officer. And Tina Carroll, please. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Uh, my name is uh, Tina Carro, and I manage a pilot project run by Storuman Municipality. The two years project will be test several operation actions that are based on studies and research, some of which come from the previous recruit and retain program. Various success factors. Uh, for recruitment and retaining those who have established themselves here will be tried and test. We call our department the relocation service and I am the relocation coordinator. Uh, I began my position in August 2018 and it was clear from the start that there are several methods that can be looked at. As you all know, there have been many job cancers over the years that have been difficult to fill. We are also aware to the fact that over the years, more people have left the municipality than have moved in. Uh, next slide. The first major operation, major operation we test was to send a postcard to 1,450 individuals between the age of 20 and 55 who have left the municipality during the last uh, 10 years. This was based on studies that showed 
that there is a charged group that could consider returning after spending time away from home. 180 postcards were returned due to the incorrect addresses, which means that 1,270 received the card and its positive message. It explained that the municipality was currently in a positive extending phase and could offer attractive employment opportunities. It also highlights the wide range of active clubs and associations that prove a meaningful leisure time. Uh, next slide. In conjunction with sending out the postcard, we also put a form on the municipal website where individuals can register their interests in the area. I then make contact with those who request more information. Sophia filled in the form. She is a highly educated person who grew here and, uh, and uh, chose to move in other to study and then moved even further away to a job that utilized her skills. She has always had a desire to re return at some point but could not quite find a way in which it would work out. The postcard gave her the impetus to try again, and now Sophia has made up her mind. She's coming home. Next slide. Uh, relocation service has an incredible important role to play in recruiting and retaining individuals. All activities are focused on sustainability and the notion of working together. The community is the collective spirit of those who live here. Everyone is important. Working with, with recruitment requires that we cooperate and head in the same direction. We understand that we need to operate not as individuals, but as a team, and that is why we will be succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tina. Um, I can see that we are even on track on time now, so um, we are going to leave back to you, Roger, for you to introduce the next speaker. So, Roger Stresser, please take us forward now. Um, in this. <laughs> 